Um, thank you very much for having me here today and uh, to present our work. I must disclose that uh, this project is part of a collaboration between Imperial College and Digital Surgery and my postgraduate research degree is partly funded by Digital Surgery. So um, the background to this work you probably uh, familiar with. Um, there has been um, worrying reports um, um, highlighting the uh, huge amount of inadequate and insufficient uh, surgical care that is provided globally. And uh, worryingly, there's also huge numbers of uh, medical and surgical errors and morbidity and mortality associated with surgical care on a global level. And one of the factors that has been uh, identified as contributing to these is obviously the lack of appropriate, uh, appropriately trained staff. Um, and certainly, uh, we have experienced changes in the training curriculum. We have experienced it firsthand, probably many people in this room. Uh, we have had our work in uh, operating hours uh, slashed by the European Working Time Directive, so maybe things will change with Brexit, who knows. Um, but um, we have also lost the um, apprenticeship structure. We are uh, currently uh, being moved around through different rotations every few months and exposed to uh, the different um, techniques of uh, in different hospitals, different bosses, different specialties. And similarly, this can be said for the rest of the operating uh, theatre staff team who are also exposed to unfamiliar procedures, new technologies coming in on a daily basis. Um, and what is uh, alarming is that there is no uh, formal uh, onboarding or induction to the work that is going to take place in the operating theatre in aviation, uh, Formula One racing. They have uh, lots of simulation programs for the whole of the team, but we do not have that in surgery, and we're equally working under uh, lots of stress and uh, time constraints, obviously. So we wanted to address some of these issues, and what best way then to use the new technologies and innovations that are constantly being developed. So uh, we came up with the concept of an intelligent operating room to try and support the whole of uh, the team to enhance their performance and achieve safer surgery and better outcomes. And uh, this um, intelligent operating room revolves around a, a digital ecosystem um, which is formed of different technologies that can help to uh, support each member of the, tree of the team to learn, train and develop further. And in particular, we have created a software that allows the uh, consultant to prepare uh, operative workflows of instructions for each different phase of the procedure. And these can be used in anticipation of the surgery by each member of the team as a form of induction, so they can go through the cognitive task analysis and mental rehearsal, so that everybody going into that OR knows exactly what is supposed to be happening there. It can be used in the OR because these workflows can be displayed inside uh, the operating theater so that this further allows to for consolidation of uh, that knowledge and um, because the workflows are there for everybody to see every member is literally on the same page every, oh, sorry everybody knows exactly where we are at and this allows for a seamless coordination between the different uh, team members um, furthermore the uh, standardization of the procedure obviously allows for the identification and avoidance of errors much more easily and finally all of these factors can contribute towards decreasing operative time decreasing waste and um, uh, decreasing, in, sorry, increasing theatre utilisation and therefore increasing efficiency, meaning more surgery and more resources for more patients. Um, so this is uh, what the um, editing mode looks like when you're creating a workflow. It can just take a few minutes. You can do it on a phone or on a laptop. And you can put in as much detail as you want, really. It can have links to uh, relevant research papers, videos. It can even have links to uh, the company's equipment instructions, if needed. And uh, when projected in the ORs, you can see there's uh, different views for the different members of the team. Um, and these are controlled, uh, well, initially they were controlled through pedals to help uh, each member to move forward through the different workflows. And you can see in particular here for the scrub nurse, for instance, there is a split screen which um, advises them of the equipment needed for that particular step, but also tells them what's going to be needed for the next step so that they're always ready and ahead of the game. 
But in order to create a truly intelligent operating room, we wanted to cut out the human interaction. We wanted the OR, the computer, to know exactly what is at its core, and that is the operation itself. So we needed to create an interface between the operation and the computer. And uh, to do that, we developed laparoscopic computer vision. And um, as uh, you can imagine, uh, this um, is based on a machine learning algorithm that uh, has been fed lots and lots of uh, images of surgical videos and uh, can now recognize exactly what is going on during uh, the operation, what phase is being performed by collaborating all of this information. And uh, the first algorithm was developed for sleeve gastrectomies, um, 70 videos or so where um, annotated by different surgeons, divided into uh, hundreds of thousands of frames which were segmented and labeled and then fed into uh, VML. And some of these were used as a training set, some for uh, validation. And uh, the results, in fact, um, you can see here an example. This is uh, the ML recognizing in real time um, the phase of the procedure that is being performed. For the sleeve, there's six phases. And um, as you can see, it also um, constructs a, a timeline of the different operative phases. Um, the in preliminary results are very promising. As you can see, there's very high accuracy, in particular for the main phases, so uh, for the port insertion, the dissection of the greater curve, and the actual stapling of the sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, accuracy is almost as good for the leak test and closure phase. However, it does drop for the specimen removal because that tends to be just a few seconds and it's quite hard to catch it, really. But what is uh, very uh, useful is that uh, the ML can uh, almost as we said, immediately um, detail the, um, um, sorry, uh, label the uh, videos and uh, divide them according to the various phases. These can be uploaded onto a, a video hub and uh, it can inform the surgeon of their performance. It can inform the whole team, but it particularly allows the surgeon to um, compare that performance with their previous repository of cases. And uh, they can also label each um, frame that may be of interest, a, an anatomical variant or new strategy that they have used. And this can be shared on the uh, online community with other surgeons or with their trainees, which helps to further this uh, part of the training and development we were talking about and feeds into the post-operative phase of reflection and further development, which of course will allow us to be better prepared for uh, the future. And. Um, so hopefully, you see, we have uh, reached the very first phase of achieving a truly intelligent operating room, and obviously there's infinite implications and there's numerous research projects ongoing. So hopefully I'll be able to come back to you with more results in the future. Um, that's it. Yes, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs>